Hi, my name is Megan. I am 28 years old and I am a recovering heroin addict. I want to spread a little bit of hope today just because at this time we are in a time in this world where everything is just so negative and feels hopeless. I don't know if you are a recovering addict. I don't know if you're a hopeless addict out there actively using. I don't know if you are a family member of a hopeless addict who is out there actively using and you are worried about them. I just want you to know that we can recover. They can recover. You can recover. I was that addict that literally went through a outpatient rehab called Mary Haven for two years and not one day of it was I sober. I would, I was also on felony probation at this time, but I would carry pee on me either in a small little bottle in my bra to keep it warm because you always has, have to have it at temperature because most places do check the temperature or I would keep it in a small bottle down in my underwear and I've actually kept it inside of me as well um, but doing that for so long you do get caught like you're not going to outsmart it forever. You know, now they have those hats that you like have to stick down in the toilet. It goes over the toilet bowl. That way you can't stick your hands down there and pop anything or anything like that. I've done that with a person in the room. Like I used to stick a little small tube inside of me and I would just, you know, stick the cup down there. When I would hold the cup, I'd pop it with my uh, finger because I put a plastic bag tie a really small rubber band around it and just pop my fingernail through it and let the pee come out well you know after so long you you do eventually get caught you can't run like that forever well I violated went to prison got out was completely clean off of probation everything scot-free and in two months was back in prison well, back in jail heading to prison um that was when i caught my charges for possession of heroin and promoting prostitution um i got out and i decided that it was time for me to change my life around that i wasn't didn't want to live like that forever and I got into church as soon as I got out and I started doing things the right way and um, when I got out this last time I was on probation. I had five years of paper to do when I got my judicial and I got off probation two and a half years early and how I did that was I realized that you are only as sick as your secrets because I definitely relapsed after I had gotten out of prison this last time too. It just wasn't as bad and it wasn't as long. I realized, you know, when I got pregnant with my son that I didn't want him to live the life that I did growing up. I didn't want him to be in and out of the system and, you know, be doomed from the get-go. Like before he's even born into this world, be doomed and I didn't want that. So I went and got myself help. I put myself in an inpatient rehab. I really put 100% my all into it. And, you know, I realized that life is precious and life is short. And you're only as sick as your secrets. You know, when they give you that opportunity to read your 12 steps and to go through them, be honest, be honest, be 100% honest, lay everything out onto the table. It's going to be embarrassing and you're going to feel this big, but I guarantee you the things that you have done are no better or no worse than the, the addict that you're talking to. The person that is your sponsor, 
clearly your sponsor was an addict themselves. I'm sure they've done things that you have done that's either worse than you or better, th not better than you, but not as bad, or vice versa. You know, and I had to come to that realization like, you know, this girl's done the same thing probably that I've done. And she's probably done things that I haven't done that I feel that are bad. But it's not my point to judge her and it's not her point to judge me. That's God. God is the person that can judge us. And when I did that, when I did that fourth step and I laid it all out on the table and I did everything that I should have done the right way the first time, you feel so much better inside. And yeah, you, there isn't going to be, I mean, you're, you're not going to remember everything. At least I didn't. I still have things that, you know, just randomly pop up into my head and I'm like, oh my God, I completely forgot about that. But as long as you're telling that to somebody, it doesn't necessarily have to be that sponsor that you read your fourth step or did the fourth step with to begin with. As long as you're letting that secret out, you're going to feel better. You don't want to hold that stuff in. And going to church, I don't know how, what your religious status is, how you feel about all of that, but I love God. I believe in God. I believe in like, that's my higher power and staying with your higher power, staying away from the people, places and things doing the best, the best right thing, next best thing, whatever. That is what's going to keep you sober. That is what is going to keep you feeling good about being clean. Um, I couldn't imagine using now. I have way, 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 way too much to lose. I completed probation two and a half years early. I, which is like very unheard of in my county. I have children that love me that I love. I have a husband that loves me that I love dearly. I have way too much to lose. A home. Everything that's in our home. A beautiful life everything that I could possibly want and I'm grateful for that and I'm blessed for that and I thank God for that every day and I wouldn't want to go out there and use now I'm not gonna say that there's not days that I would like to that just feel too overwhelming that I would like to escape myself I'm not gonna tell you that because I would be lying to you there definitely is those days, but those are the days that I know that I need to talk to either my husband about it or talk to a friend about it. Get back into church. As long as you're staying into church and you're going to your meetings, and I really can't even say going to your meetings because I really haven't been going to meetings in a long time. Every once in a while we'll go to a meeting, but not too often everybody does their own program with their own like time span and their own certain way at the beginning i did go to a lot of meetings but not so much now and usually people relapse when they do that so i'm not recommending that but do what is best for you now, if you feel you need to go to a meeting, go to a meeting. There's times that me and my husband feel we need to go to meetings and we go. But we haven't been to a meeting in a while. I don't have the desire to use. I don't have the want to use. And I have so many recovery books in this pantry here that there is times that I pull them out and look at them and... You know, I like the workbooks. You can look back at where you once were and like where your mind thought, like where your mind space was then. And
I just want you guys to know that you don't always have to be an addict. You can definitely get clean. You can definitely change your life. You can go from the bottom up to the top, but it takes your effort. You got to want it for yourself. But I just wanted to spread a little bit of positivity today in this very negative world with everything going on with the coronavirus and you know there's people out there that are freaking out jumping truck drivers and stuff like that for just out of fear, out of pure fear and it's crazy. But. I just wanted to spread a little positivity, a little realness, and let you guys know that this isn't the end of the world. There is a way out of it, and it starts with you. Now, if you need any help or anything like that, you can always email me. I always have my email in the description box of every video, and I always have my Instagram handle in the description box as well of every video. You can email me, you can comment down below, you can send me a message on Instagram and I will do whatever I can to get you the help that you need to get clean. Um, I will talk to you if that's all you want to do is just talk to somebody. I'm here to listen and I will help you with as much as I possibly can and give you my advice. Um, a lot of people need to stop acting like it's every man for themselves and we need to just come together and we're all in this cruel, evil, horrible world and we are all just out here trying to survive and get by and being an addiction is not the way to go. I can tell you that. I would really, really, really hate to be that addict out there right now with possibly not being able to leave your home at any given day. I mean, they can quarantine everybody to their homes at any given moment and you can't get out to get anything. You aren't getting out to get your drug of choice you aren't getting out to get anything. You are mandated to your home, which means you have no option other than to withdraw unless you have a unlimited supply of whatever drug it is that you do. And I would hate that to have that feeling right now. But um, I'm gonna go. I have some cleaning and things that I needed to do. This is a very short video and I do wanna apologize for that. But, um, like I said, I just wanted to get on here and spread a little bit of positivity. I will be posting more videos of my past. And if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are just coming across my channel, like the channel, like this video, and hit that subscribe button. I love you guys. Bye.